and the trees and the bushes. Oh, hi, guys. We're here on MazeCast, and I just interrupted myself singing for <laughs> Room 4, which is this week's episode. Now, for those who don't know, which is probably none of you, uh, this is the, the Great Hall. There's, there's more rooms here than any other room in the maze. Um, we feature uh, rooms going to the path, rooms going to the trap, well, at least uh, a couple of rooms in the trap, and um, a whole bunch of them going to the loop. But in any case, I like this room because it's one of the rooms that uh, we sort of collaboratively solved based on, on stuff that we noticed together, and then we put it all together and we, we came up with some, some good stuff. Um, the, I believe the only part of this room, uh, Vince, you want to pull up the, uh, the picture of it? Sure, give me a second here. Whoops. Wanna... Okay, well, while he's pulling it up, I'll just explain that uh, one of the only puzzles that was discovered from back in the day, um, I'm guessing Bailey, Bailey's site, maybe even before that, um, was the word it was something that you can generate from this room based on the shape of the candle and the gavel, which form an it. Um, I believe that forms part of the riddle of the path, which is trying to make a sentence out of a bunch of words or letters that you find through the rooms going back and forth. And in this room, the word is it, which again, as I said, is, is formed from the, 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 the candle and the... Really yeah. that, Sorry, Vince, what were you saying? Oh, I said, do you really buy that, though, the candle and the gavel? I think so, yeah. I, I buy that. I, th I think um, it's it fits into the types of clues that, um, you know, because, you know, Manson, he, he, he does like to switch up the puzzles in different rooms. Sometimes it's numerical. Sometimes it's uh, related to a story like it is with the cask of Amontillado. Uh, I think in this room, yeah, it's possible that it, that it could be. An, well, dude, where else are you going to find the it from? Well, from the verbs in the room. I think that's a better explanation of it. I mean, here's the problem. Why does he put the little loop thing at the bottom of the candle, you know? If he had just made it a straight candle and a straight candle holder, then you've got an eye. You know, it looks pretty good. Why put? Why make it look like a lowercase b? Well, oh, see... Oh, I, ha I had a theory about that. I, I don't quite buy my own theory at this point in time, but it was something to do with the, with the handles because the axe has a handle, the gavel has a handle, um, the candle has a handle, haha. Uh, but, you know, I, I like to come up with these theories that, that, that go nowhere. I've come up with a billion theories about every room in the maze where I make these sort of simple observations that people are like, oh, yeah, that's true, but what are we going to do with that? Nothing, really. <laughs> So, um, in in that sense, um, in that sense, I I do think that there is a purpose to it, maybe related to to the handles. But again, like we've got nothing of that. So I sort of revert back to the whole IT thing, just because there's nothing better that we've come up with. Well, okay. Okay, uh, you go into it. You go into the whole it uh, thing. Don't forget to go to gaming night before you get too far into the room. All right. Gaming night, take it away. What'd you what you uh, come up with? What'd you think of this room? Well, um, one of the things on that room forty three, the maze looks like it's the word lie backwards. So that's not a meaning that room's a, you know not the right room to go to. Wait, what's oh you're saying written in the yeah the maze it looks like the word lie. Where do you see the I? In between the E and the I. The e and L. You don't see E L L? No, I see E I L. L I E. Hmm. You sure? <laughs> I see E L L too, but I mean the eyes there too as well. I guess it's possible. I guess. Are you looking at the lines of the maze, or like the space between the lines in the maze? The lines in the maze where it goes E, then the, then there's a the, uh, looks like an I almost, but it's got that little I don't know part of the, the corridors a little bit, but okay. But, but the actual letters you can actually read without no problem. Z is E L L. Oh, you're talking about you're seeing this thing. Can you see my cursor? You're calling this the I here? Uh, little down one. 
This? Yeah. Well, well, look. It's a perfect L. It looks just like this one. Yeah, that's an L. That's oh, no, 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 no. Between, the, between those. Like this? No, oh, she... Uh, it's just above the E. This? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. L-I-E, right here. All right, I got you. What? I, I, I would believe that more if the... Oh, no, you know what? That's good. I, I was going to say something about mirror image letters, but they're all in the same direction, so that's, that is a possibility. Because see, gaming night, we've we've looked, we've seen the LLE before, but you know, again, we haven't come up with anything relating to that. Wait, Vince, is there something up with the ELL? Is there something? Yeah. What's up with that? Well, it's ELL pronounced L, meaning the letter L. That's the uh, this is where you get the L for the riddle of the path for spelling shoulder. Supposedly. Uh, I think it's pretty good. Oh, you 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 mean in terms of uh, you can find all the other shoulder letters throughout? The well, all the other shoulder letters it's about. I think we're pretty solid on getting the L from this room. But yeah, the uh, the wood uh, the wood blocks down there look like the N I though because it's almost in the bottom corner, like the uh, uppercase I. Almost. Okay. I see what you're saying. There's one log connecting two other, or half one half log connecting two other half logs. Like you could kind of make an eye out of that. But I don't know if that's what that where that, that's where the eye is supposed to come from or not. I have no idea. From what you guys are saying. He's saying. Alex is saying, and it's not like he's making this up. This is kind of like the orthodox view is that this candle is an I, and this mallet is a T, and that gives you I-T. Right. It. What I'm saying, I question why this candle has this, you know, holder on it that gives it a totally different shape. Hmm. Unless it's the off ball. See, the thing is, the, the only reason that I really accept it is because of its secondary reason, which is that and I, I guess I'll get into it since nobody else has breached the subject, is that the things in this room all end in IT. So, for example, the, the um, things, but candle the... is unlit. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the plank of wood with the two nails in it has not been hit yet. You've got the chair, which you can sit in. And Am I missing any? Uh, the, uh, oh, the, the wood can be split. The wood split. Yeah, the thing is split. So I was talking to Vince earlier on today, and he was sort of questioning me why the why is split the odd man out? And I'll say because it's the only one that has been done. It's not something that needs to be done, such as the candle being lit, which is sort of a future tense thing. And uh, there's a little controversy over whether those two nails well, have been hit, and they are to be hit, or maybe if they have been hit already... But I'm I'm thinking that they haven't been hit yet. They're just being set up to be hit, the same way that the the candle has been set up to be lit. Well, and the and the diagram over there on room 44 shows that they fit together those pieces too. Right. Yeah. That's a fit. So that's another IT word. Yeah. So for that reason, I I buy the IT thing a lot more than if it was just by itself. I think if it was by itself, then I would agree with Vince that it's just hearsay and um, you know. People just be tripping, but because of all those, all those, uh, all those things that um, that reinforce it, with the, with the it being the last letters of the word, I think for that reason, um, it's legitimate, and it could go either way with the ell, you know, spelling l using that, or maybe the it is also something that's um, in the riddle of the path. But in any case, hey, I got an idea that just yeah. came to me on this subject. Um, you know, we were talking earlier about uh, the, the cat and the possibility that the cat mentioned in the text leaving the room has to do with suggesting the verb exit. But I just thought about the maze over here in the doorway to 43. 
right in the middle there, there's an exit from that. And that points right over where we want to go to. Over, I mean, actually, it essentially points at every other door in the room because it points straight across. But in the same way that everything else points towards 29 and 15, the exit from 43 takes you over there as well. You know what I mean? Yeah, in the sense that the uh, it's points it's pointing in the direction of the of the correct way, even though it's not maybe indicating those two doors specifically. Right. It might be indicating you know that that direction. The same way that the bird in, in seven is pointing towards the right door, but he's not necessarily you know point directly towards it. Yeah, but that one's bunk. <laughs> you think so? I don't think that bird pointing that way means anything, no. You don't think it's even more um, significant than this? Because, it, it, like, in the sense that the bird, there's only one, it's one direction, there's only one door in that direction. This one, there's three doors in that direction. Which yeah. one could be? I'm just, well, every time you got a room, there's going to be something in the room that's pointing towards the right exit. I don't think that means anything. There's nothing telling us to follow the bird or anything like that. Um, what about the mallet? Here, the mallet's pointing towards 29. Well, here in this room, yeah, but that's why I'm saying that the maze exit seems to fit. Because you would exit the maze just like, you know, it fits with exit, hit, lit, split, fit, sit. I'm just saying it fits the pattern. With that, I will agree. All right. All right, that's one new solution for the night. Wrap it up. All right. Uh, no, I, I, I didn't have much else. I just wanted to, to, to come in in a fluster and uh, <laughs> talk about a bunch of shit. But um, I don't have much else on, on this room. I, th I think that was our, 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 uh, our victory there. Um, I've got well, a good solution. You know, a good solution ties together the elements of the room. You know, so that you don't have a hundred different things to say about the room. You just kind of point out how it all goes together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, we should go through the text. Good. Maybe. Well, yeah, we'll go through the text. Do you want me to read it? Uh, I'll read it. I'll read it. <laughs> I don't participate enough in these things. Okay. The great hall of many doors. What a foolish face, I snorted. Pay no attention. All right. Now we need to stop and talk about that. Because we I have not heard any plausible explanation for why that face is there, why the sun is up there. And when the guide says he doesn't want you to pay attention to it, that certainly signals to us, the reader, that there's something important about it. But I don't know what... What to take away from that? Um, I don't know. I'm maybe uh, like I, like I said, eleven's not the right room. So like like uh, Icarus uh, flew too close to the sun and you know fell to the earth. Uh, good observation, actually. Nobody's mentioned that. No, I, that's an interesting thought. I'd say eleven is is basically the second worst door you could pick after twenty four. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, 11, 24, 43, it's all pretty lousy. Usually, um, the guide is, is uh, usually what the guide says is the opposite of what you should be doing. He's, he's usually deceiving you. But in this case, it's sort of a reverse psychology thing. Like he, well, maybe. Like, or maybe, unless the, the sun really like does. No attention, you know, knowing that in previous rooms that you paid attention to things that uh, that he's sort of drawn drawn your attention away from, but in this case, it's the other way around. He's drawing your attention to something drawing attention away from something bad. Hmm. Well, the, the guide seems to have two different interests in distracting people from something. He doesn't want them to solve the rooms correctly, and he also doesn't want them to know who he is, presumably. Uh, I mean, that's how I read the, the rip sign in six, is that he 
destroyed the sign because he doesn't want them to know who he is. So it's possible that the son relates to the identity of the guide in some way, and that's why he doesn't want them to pay any attention to it, but also why it doesn't really seem to fit in with a room solution. Yeah, but then again, like I said, that, that it goes down back to the whole mythology thing. If it's a yeah. character from Greek mythology or something. I think that those have been the strongest suggestions. They've all come from Greek mythology. Um, just because the number of Greek mythological references in the book, it seems to fit. Um, yeah, I'd say so. I mentioned last time we were talking about Seven, if if the guide is the Minotaur, whose name was Asterion, his name means the starry one. So there could be a relationship there with this face as well, but I don't know. It doesn't seem like a spot-on way to clue the Minotaur to... Well, at the same time, I think it's worth mentioning that um, during the Bailey days, I can't remember who the actual poster was, but somebody... Um, made a pretty convincing argument that the sun is the guide because of the various clues that you find um, around the maze. I'm not sure how it relates specifically to this room, but I thought it was a pretty convincing argument based on, on their talk of, um, you, know, um, you know, the play on the word Manson and, uh, and the stuff in room 19, maybe combined with this kind of stuff. Um, I'm not convinced, surely, but I think it was a pretty convincing argument. Um, for those who don't know what I'm talking about, check out uh, mazecast.com or actually uh, mazearchive.tk and you'll see John Bailey's old site. You'll see a couple of the posts there referring to the, the, the guide as the sun. Can you, Vince? Yeah, it's, it's an attractive theory because of room 24, I think, mainly. The idea that when the guide leaves them, they're left alone in darkness makes you want to think of the guide as some kind of source of light. I don't know about him being the sun exactly, because, I mean, the sun is featured as a separate entity in the maze. The sun actually glares at the guy in room one, but he could be some kind of light-based deity that's um, associated with the sun. All right. That's all I got on that statement. Well, I mean, yeah. I think it's an interesting thought based on the... The answer to the riddle of the maze is the is the is the world or the earth. Then there could definitely be some interplay there with the sun. You know, again, I'm not convinced that it's the guide, but um, I think maybe you know there's, there's some clues there, maybe relating to the zodiac or twelve or the twelve signs of the zodiac, something like that, maybe. All right, next line. All I got on that. Next line, yes. Uh, a sound made them all turn suddenly. All right, now, what's the sound? I can't figure out from any of these adjoining rooms or anything in here what this sound would be. And he offers no description of the sound. What if it's the uh, axe splitting the wood? No, well, it's, it's presumably something in another room. Oh, yeah, okay. Because they're already in the room at that point. What about 29? Maybe it's uh, Montresor breaking up uh, Fortunato? Uh, 39. Oh, okay, so it's not a room in here then. So it's no, not no, no, it's unmarked, but 39 does connect here. Ah. Yeah, you would have come from 39 to here. That's the correct uh, direction. It might be, although then later on when it says faint voices came down one of the corridors, I always assumed that was them coming from 39, because there's that sound interplay between 4 and 39 when you get to 39, you know, where they're in 39, they hear hammering and chopping, and then he tries to usher them out through the doorway with as much commotion as possible. Well, you know, it might be as simple as that. You know, room 39, I don't hear anything I said loudly, and with as much commotion as possible, hurried them out of the room. And here it says a sound made them all turn suddenly. I mean, it could just be that. It could just be the, what, I mean, they don't specify how he's making a commotion in 39. You know, maybe it's just whatever the commotion is from 39. Although, now that I'm thinking about it, I just came up with this on the spot. 
um, a sound made them all turn suddenly. So the things in this room that would make a loud noise would be the chopping and the hammering, which are both mentioned in 39, but the only thing that's not mentioned, which would be fairly quiet in comparison to these two, is lighting the candle. Like in terms of the, the, the three sort of actionary things that are happening here, the quietest is the candle being lit. Okay. Or it could even be the, the, the seat being sat in. That's also a pretty quiet movement, but I have a feeling that it doesn't piece into this. I'm just thinking on the spot here. But anyway, if you want to keep on going. No, no, no. That's basically, I was just taking 10 minutes to say that I don't know what that line refers to. All right. Uh, a small black cat ran out of the door to my right, sniffed at us, and, before I could move, ran out of the hall. It was fortunate that I was still standing with the rest of them, or they might have noticed. Yeah, kind of like the sun. He doesn't, he doesn't want them to notice the cat, but we have no clue why. We have no clue how the cat helps or would help them if they had saw it, if they had seen it. Um, now, on the abyss, and I think this was Greg's suggestion, it's noted, you know, the, the, the correct doors are on the right-hand side from the perspective of the sun, and this thing about the black cat running out of a door to my right is supposed to be indicative of that. Um, I mean, if you take if you take the idea that the the way the cat runs out of the room is helpful to the group, which I guess we're supposed to believe it is because guy doesn't want them to see it, um, then I guess a clue that tells us which way the cat ran out would be helpful. Uh, and I mean, and there's our right hands on that side of the room. Oh, you're for, you're you're forgetting something. Um, I don't know if it was Greg who came up with that. Maybe it was. Um, but something to do with the way the hands are holding those torches. Um, that it's the right hand on the right on the left side of the room. Yeah. That, the, the torches, and maybe it was something to do with that. Like he, he mentions the word right is because of the right-handed. Porch bearers on that side of the room. Right, that's what I meant. That's, but it, but it was doing. I mean, it's right. They're right hands, regardless of what perspective you're looking at them from. But for some reason, he associated that um, to my right stuff with the sun, which I guess would make sense if the sun were associated with the guide. But I don't know. I think it's hard to tell which way the guy himself is facing, actually. He just well, made a comment about the sun. Well, I think, you know, you might be able to rule out the fact that if the cat uh, made a noise by, you know, tripping over to the wood or on that table, that would definitely lead to room 44. Yeah, I don't think... They seem to turn away from the cat because they don't see the cat. So I don't think it was the cat making a noise, although it could have been. I don't know. Yeah, it's pretty ambiguous. I've always I've always struggled with uh, what made the noise and whether it was the cat or not. But I don't know. I think in in recent times I've I've I figured that you know what what Vince thinks, which is uh, that it's distracting them from the cat. They're looking in a different direction from the cat, and the cat is telling us a clue that they don't see, but we as a reader do. We should use that as a clue. But it doesn't seem to be a particularly helpful clue. Yeah, it doesn't help much. It's like you, you can sort of extrapolate the hand thing. I don't believe that they're related, but, um, you know, because it was sort of, I, I don't know, I think it was sort of a, the, the hand thing was a reverse engineering thing. Because we knew the doors, we're trying to find answers based on well, we already know. Maybe, maybe not. I, I maybe I don't give Greg enough credit. I remember us all, like going, "Yeah, that's amazing." <laughs> well, I think any time you get a clue like this, where like right becomes left and left becomes right, it's problematic because if the right doors were on the right hand side of the page, we'd be saying, "Yeah, he's telling us that it's on the right side of the page." And, he, and when he says, what a foolish face, pay no attention, he's telling us not to look at things from the sun's perspective, but the blah, 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 blah. Um, 
No, I, I think again we're 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 forgetting something. What about what uh, we talked about about the guide sitting in the chair, and then it was in relation to the chair. Well, then we've got the cat running through an unmarked door. And we don't really know where it goes. But he's not sitting in the chair. He makes the point of saying he was still standing. Right. So wasn't that in relation in relation to the time element of? Uh, Oh, I don't know what. Like, there's got to be some time element in here related to the splitting of the wood. Like, you know, has already been split, but everything else hasn't. Has has the seed been sat in yet? <laughs> I don't know if that's even an important question to ask, but oh. seems like one. It's. I mean, whether it's ever been sat in ever, I don't know. But it does seem the text does seem to make a point of. He's standing. The text. Not being used. There's something there. Yeah, it's, it seems to be saying that they're all standing, um, which is telling us that they didn't sit in it, you know. So it, well, let me read this next sentence then, because it's, it's part of what we're talking about. It was fortunate that what I, I was still standing with the rest of them, as they, or they might have noticed. Sorry, that was terrible. Yeah. Did I read it already? Did I read this sentence? Already? No, I don't think so. You have it. Maybe you did, I don't know. But, or they uh, might have noticed. See, that always got me. It's like, notice what? Notice the cat, or notice some, or notice something because they were paying attention to the cat, or they saw the cat, or they saw a sound, heard a sound. They missed something completely unrelated. Yeah, and it's hard. It's again, there's kind of a disconnect there. Where what does him standing with them have to do with them noticing anything? Like, if he weren't standing with them, they would have noticed the cat. There doesn't seem to be any real relationship there, you know? Uh, yeah, it's hard to say. Like, I want to see, I want to say the axe, but if the axe wasn't standing there, then it wouldn't be in front of the two correct doors. But that's the opposite of what we're trying to do, which is find the correct door, not obscure them. Yeah, what does, how does him standing with them Prevent, prevent them from noticing something. Well, gentle viewers, obviously this is one puzzle that we haven't <laughs> managed to crack yet. <laughs> the riddle of the standing guide. Yeah, the whole the whole paragraph there, the whole business with the cat and everything is pretty mysterious. Faint voices came down one of the corridors. I assume that that's in relation to room 39. Shall we toss a coin? I asked. Or have you made up your minds? Uh, I think this is a, um, a, another suggestion that there are two rooms that we need to take here. You know, tossing a coin only makes sense if you've gotten it down to two rooms. So I think that's, uh, that's an indication that there are two different doors we're going to take here. They had made up their minds, and they had no coins. By a process of elimination, they decided to go to. So, do you think that in that in that last sentence, he's telling you how you have to solve this room by process of elimination? Yeah. That's not what I'm getting at all, like everything we've talked about so far, has been everything but that. Well, I don't know. I mean, or is it a red herring? I don't think it's a red herring. I guess there are different ways you could look at it being a process of elimination. If you were looking at the all the it verbs and the ones that have been done versus have not been done, then you could you could you could think of it as a process of elimination. Like, okay, those things haven't been fit together. He didn't sit in the chair. They didn't hit the nails. You know, didn't the the candle is not lit, and so you start eliminating. Uh, everything except for the X, I suppose. Um, another way I've looked at it is uh, 15 you could have gone to earlier along the path, which means that if you're following the correct path, you know that 15 is not correct here because you would have gone to 15 when you could have gone there earlier. There would be no reason to follow these other rooms here. And 15, it's even 
highlighted in room 30 that you can go to 15 with that if no eve sign like to you know, bring it out in your memory that you had the option to go to 15 earlier and uh, so, so are you saying that it has to be something without a without a doubt you have to get 15 out of this process of elimination yeah but see that that assumes that you can assume that you're following the correct path and um, you haven't made any missteps along the way, which is a big assumption to have to make, you know, in order to get the correct solution of a room. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I wouldn't say I've got a good process of elimination going for this room. But I don't think that's just, I don't think he's, I don't know, I think there's a reason for phrasing it that way. 15, yeah, I guess, yeah, you can't go to 15. Oh, so maybe, maybe there's something to do with when you go from, if you if you went from 4 to 15, and you're on, you're in, you're you're heading into the maze. You still haven't been to 45 yet, and you're heading to 45. 15 is on the path, but how do you how do you distinguish? I know we're sort of talking about 15 here, but I think it relates because of the the whole importance of four being a room that you encounter twice. How would you know what order to go to the rooms in? I guess if you can, or I guess another question would be. Could you solve four without going through the maze first? You see what I'm getting at? Is it's like yeah. if you go from four to fifteen, how do you know that you've taken the wrong turn, but not the second time? Yeah, I mean we've made suggestions on that before, and um, and there are some suggestions for that in the abyss. But that's another place where I think it's. The suggestions are so weak, they only seem to work after the fact. They wouldn't convince you ahead of time. So there's the idea, like, the axe head is going in to the log, um, which I, I don't know. That doesn't really mean anything to me. No, no, no. You, I think you're onto something. The head of the axe and then the, then the tail of the axe. Like, heads usually comes first in English language. Heads or tails, you always say heads first. Right, so maybe maybe he was going for that. Like I know, you know, I'm starting to see these in a different light. It's a, a, a lot more loosely, like not just because of 34, but just because, you know, 45 as well. And just the, the you know, I was watching our first episode the other day. You made a good point, which is, um, I, nobody came up with the answer to the maze without the the hints, right? So maybe we got hints to four. I know we never will, but if we if we got Manson hints from four. And maybe it would enlighten us more, but I, I, I don't know. I, th I think that's a, that's a, that's pure possibility. Is that the head of the axe is the one we go in first because head is what you mentioned first, and tails is fifteen. I think that's that's completely plausible. Hey, I got an idea just now, um, and it actually brings the uh, the sun into it. Sorry, I was just doing a little bit of googling there based on an idea I had. Take a look at that sun there. It's it's like the face of a coin. Now you can only see half of it, but it's a rounded thing. It has the face on it. That would be the head side of a coin. And so I just Googled sun coin and found a number of images that uh, looked sort of like that. Yeah, that's so, pretty cool. Actually, there are some very some fairly similar sun-faced coins out there. Let me give me a second here. Let me uh, screen. Well, you can find it in eighty-five minutes. Find something here. All right. Can you see that now? Yeah. I mean, that's not a dead-on match, but that's pretty good. I mean, I think that's about as close to this sun as Orson in sixteen is to the woodcut of Orson. You know, they're not identical, but they're close. Oh, yeah. to see. No, go to the one that says Argentina. Go back. Go back. What? You see the one that says Argentina above it, sort of. It's got yeah. more. Um, it's it's got more uh, sort of geometric rays. Yeah, that one. 
I think he looks like that one. Well, there are a bunch. But the thing, I mean, you can see there's it's kind of a, a similar recurring pattern, you know? Yeah. You can see there are a number of, well, we get a little further from it as we go down. Uh, yeah, for sure. I see it. Yeah. Look at that guy with the glasses. Uh, yeah, no, that's that's a good uh, that's a good find. I wonder if there's one particular. This Argentinian coin seems to be the most famous, but it's not particularly appealing to think that he would use an Argentinian coin for some reason. Um, but in any case, that strikes me as reasonably plausible. And that explains why he doesn't want them to pay any attention to the face and how they made their minds up without a coin. Now, I guess that doesn't make it clear that you should be doing something different the second time, though, you know? Like, it, is, it could just as easily be the case that you take the same... No, it couldn't. Well, yeah, it could. It could just as easily be the case that you take the same door from four both times, even though you come here twice. You know, you could make a maze that way, where taking the same door from here two times leads you to the, uh, the well, correct so path. This is not the only room that you go through twice. Let me guess. It's uh, room five next door. Well, that also would, you know, make your statement with room 29 because 29, you got to flip it upside down for heads up. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> it's tails there, doesn't it? That's true. Um. Yeah, that's funny. In 29, they've got all the, those pictures of things on the signs that have to do with flipping, and they don't have a coin anywhere among them. I guess maybe because they don't want to. He doesn't want to use the uh, what he uses for a red herring, which is recurring objects. Yeah, if that's even true, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, he doesn't use any coins. Maybe because then he would have to think about what to put on it, and it might be something that uh, you know to associate with a country, or you know maybe not in the case of the sun. Now, if we could associate the cat with door 15 for some reason, that would give us tails for that one, right? Oh, but we don't need that. Tails, that doesn't help us. I don't know. I'm just thinking 15 does have a noise in it too, right? There's the thump and then a door slam. You know, if it was room 13, I would understand, right? The black cat, yeah. Ah, uh, 13, unlucky, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah, 15, no clue. Like, 15 is really the three room, you know what I mean? Like, even though it's room 15. Um, and, uh, well, Vince, how many rooms are there clues to other rooms in, Real, like, realistically? You can probably keep them on one hand. You mean, like, like connections, like, between 10 and 37, like, where they're clearly connected to each other in that way? No, 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 like like 4 and 39, where they hear the chopping and the banging. And yeah, actually... I think that's kind of the same thing. So we've got 4 and 39, we've got 10 and 37, you know, where they're on either side of the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would even say, like, 41 and 38, where you've got the slide, the top of the slide, one room, yes. and the bottom of the yeah. slide, the other. Um, I'd say 38 and 40 are kind of connected because of the, the broken key that I think relates to the way they connect up, that there's kind of relationship there. Uh, room 7 has the music nearby that you hear from 36. Um, room 1 has the bell ringing, which sort of connects to 20 and sort of suggestively connects to... 26. Basically, something tells me that, that that connection between 4 and 39 is the only interconnected rooms. What do you mean? I just listed like five of them. No, 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 no. I mean for room 4. Like, there's not oh, something. Okay. <laughs> between room 4, no, no, no. You're totally right. Between room 4 and 39, though, there's a connection. 
but between four and some other room, I don't think there is one. I don't think there's one between four and fifty. I mean, I don't know. Until we know what that sound is about, I'm I'm open minded to it because fifteen does. As soon as you walk in there, it mentions hearing a thump and a door slam. When you're in four, you hear a noise coming from somewhere. Maybe uh, four is the true beginning of, of Top Hat, not 15. Yeah, I've certainly thought about that, about Top Hat running through there. I mean, this seems to be where Top Hat is running to from room 16, because this is where the unmarked door comes from in 16. You could also read that as a small black hat. <laughs> Just started going around. It's just a hat. It's not even the dude. It's the hat that's the, the guide, maybe. <laughs> I've thought of, you know, uh, a small a, a small cat being a a kitten or is a sometimes abbreviated kit, but that seems uh, un <laughs> unlikely to me. That would be just to give you another kit, but that doesn't even really fit the pattern very well. And I mentioned it earlier in, in the show, but uh, to put it together again, the cat does exit the room or quit the room, which is, but that's, that's a verb that actually does get done. To me, that's why it would be helpful to them if they saw where it went. Yeah, I wonder if uh, the rabbit has anything to do with the guide, because White Rabbit from the Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. Down the rabbit hole. All right. Anything else for room four? We did mention, at least tangentially, that L is the letter you get from here on the return path for spelling out shoulder. I think that's one of the few safe ones. Um, what else do we have here? Square. There wasn't there something to be said about the uh, the square the square peg. Uh, I don't know. I just think it's like they're fitting the the pieces are fit. So the word I you know for it you're it. That's fit fit split. I just think it's another it. Yeah. What about the star from the sky? We haven't talked about that. The starry sky? I mean, the only thing I mentioned in regard to it was that the guide is Asterian. And there's an etymological relationship there. Uh, oh, yeah, I, I guess we failed to mention that the light is worth anything. is coming from the two bulbs at the end. And Eleven, uh, not from the sun, so you can see that reflected in the shadows. And, and the right-hand bulb has that weird double circle thing going on in it. You know, it just seems strange. I don't know what that's supposed to pictorially represent, and it's pretty hard to see here too. Might be an anomaly. Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I don't think it's accidental. Well, so he's got one circle on one side, two on the other. No, it's not a freckle. Look, he drew another circle inside this circle. I know. I see it in my book, too. It's not one of those things where it's a print mistake, print error. Oh, yeah. It's not, no, I, I see what you're saying, but I'm saying on the other side it's just a one. So what could he have meant? Like, is that a zero? Is there, should I be looking for eyes now? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think it means anything. I see it, but I don't. I can't do anything with it. Like unless you want to go back to Greg's thing about the the left hand, right hand, and um, you know maybe counting as the only legitimate hands here are the ones with the lights in them because the lights are on. Being uh, you know the right door to that right hand on, on the left side of of eleven. I know this is really confusing. But that door would, would be 15. The first marked door would be 15 to the right of the right hand. Next to 11. Anyway, that's nothing. That's just... I think the, 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 the it 
verbs are a lot. Um, I think that's the theme of the room because there's so many things here. You know, sit, lit, lit, unlit. Hit. Yeah, it verbs, unused objects. And maybe you're right about the, the, the kitten. Maybe it's like kit 10, and you get 10 and do something with that. <laughs> For some reason, I just had this feeling it was a reference to Kit Williams somehow, but that's completely unjustified. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Kit William. Uh, what is, does he even mention it? Yes, it was fortunate that I was still standing with the rest of them. Is there any other way you can interpret that? He uses the word "it." Yeah. I don't think he uses it again in that in this pair in this uh, blurb. I think mean, that's the only time you use it. It was fortunate that I was still standing with the rest. Hmm. It was fortunate. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they think they would have noticed the "it" if they saw him sit. Yeah, I don't know. It it was fortunate. Is there something that's unfortunate? Maybe the black cat? Yeah, black cat is unfortunate. I don't know. Anyway, gentle viewers, take that as you will. As you will. It is mentioned. Text. <coughs> All the cops. All right, are we ready to sign out? I think that's it, yeah. All right, good night, everybody. We'll see hey. you next time.